Hi everyone, in this video we will discuss the problem additive sequence. So let us read the problem statement and understand what the problem says and then we'll solve this problem. So the problem says here that will be given a string which will be consisting of n digits or n characters you can say and our task is to find whether it contains an additive sequence or not. So a string of uh, n digits or n additive digits can make a sequence of numbers in which every number is addition of the previous two numbers. So you are required to complete the function which returns true if the string is valid sequence. Otherwise, you have to return false if it is not a valid additive sequence. So let's see the examples for better understanding. Also, one more thing that the problem says is that for this string to be valid, it needs to contain at least three digits to make one additive sequence. So at least three digits should be there. Okay, if you will see the first test case, so we have got one, two, three, five, eight, one, three. So we have got what? One, two, three, then we have got five, eight, and then we have got one, three. So in this particular example, you can observe one thing very clearly. If I'll change the color and I'll highlight. So basically, if you take one and two, so what is one plus two? One plus two is nothing but three. And that is what the third string is all about. A third uh, character is all about. Then after that, if you see five and eight, what is five plus eight, guys? Five plus eight is nothing but 13. So that is how you get the sum. So here you can see that basically we are having what? We are having one, two, and then three. Okay. They are making a sequence and then five, eight, and 13. So basically there should be at least three digits. So here you can see that the this uh, six digit collection, all of them are... Uh, pairwise making a sum of the two elements is equal to the next element or you can say that 13 is the sum of the previous two numbers that is 5 and 8 okay so we have to try out all possibilities here and then we will be able to get it so what we need to do here is we need to run a nested loop we need to run one i loop okay and another j loop because uh, if we take the starting uh, number from uh, 0 till the ith index okay then after that uh, the next number would be taken from where uh, from uh, the i plus 1 index uh, till the jth index right and then once those two numbers are prepared then we check whether their sum is equal to the next third number or not if yes then we will uh, store that sequence and then we will try to move the loop next time from there onwards okay so this is how the approach will be let's try and write a bit of code so that we can understand it a little bit better and whatever explanation will be required i'll explain that line by line so what we will uh, be doing here is first of all and also notice one more thing the question says that there should be at least one sequence of that kind present if there are more than one sequence that is also pretty much fine so for, first of all what we will do is first of all we'll find the length of our number so let's say uh, what we can do here is if we can define the string as num okay and then we can say that int n or the length of this will be nothing but num dot size so we'll first of all find what we'll first of all find the size of the given string because we want to iterate through it and then one more thing is there that while we'll be taking the strings okay suppose that if i am taking a substring from zero till the ith index so what is my responsibility the responsibility is that that string that i'm taking and i want to convert into a number but i want to check whether it is valid or not so since the largest data number can be 18 digit only and beyond that we will not have any possibility because uh, the maximum number of digits that can be there in even in long long is nothing but 18. So whenever uh, if the size of the number of digits in the number is less than equal to 18 then it is valid otherwise it would not be valid. So this is another thing that we need to notice here. So what we will do first of all here is we will write for uh, let's say int i starts from 0 then i is lesser than n then after that we will do i plus plus and then what we will do is we will say that uh, string let's say a this is the first uh, first number that we are getting will be nothing but num dot sub str so we will take the string from 0 till uh, i plus 1 i plus 1 indicates the length so we'll, we are cutting uh, the string uh, of uh, from 0 till ith index so the length of that would be i plus 1 that is what i have passed in the second parameter now once that is done so i will check that the string that i have taken whether it is if it is valid or not so if this is string that i have taken whether it is valid or not so if this a string suppose is not valid if it returns a false then uh, what should i do if it uh, directly returns me a false then in that case uh, we can simply break away from here okay so let me write this is valid function also so let's say bool so we'll write this function here bool is valid okay 
and then uh, here we have the string let's say uh, the any string is st okay so what we are going to return is we are going to return true if and only if so we are going to return true if suppose that the size of the string that we have passed if it is less than equal to 18 then what we are going to do is we are going to return true else what we would do here is else we would return false here okay this is very important now if suppose that the first string that we have taken if it is valid okay so if it is valid then after that what should we do so we should add it in a sequence so let's say we will take a vector uh, which will be storing the sequences so what we can do uh, here is uh, let's say we can declare a vector somewhere here vector long long which will be storing the sequence uh, numbers basically because uh, I want to take their sum because for whatever current number I'm trying to generate it should be the sum of the previous two digits like previous two numbers so that's why I'm having a sequence uh, vector that will be storing the numbers okay the, the numbers that I've generated so far so what I will do here is now after this uh, I will say that since it is fine so I will push this particular number a inside my sequence so I'll push it back and I will use stoll so basically it will help me to convert that a, uh, a number which is in form of a string into long long okay now once that is done then after this we will start our j loop from where from i plus 1th index till j is less than n minus 1 why we are running in less than n minus 1 or you can say less than equal to n minus 2 because the last digit should also be allowed now because the thing is that uh, suppose that if the first number is there okay then after that we have the second number so after the second number the third number c should be there and that should at least have one digit so that is why we are running the j loop one less than the uh, last index okay because we want to allocate at least one digit to the last number as well okay then we do a j plus plus now after this uh, loop is running up and running then what i will do is i'll extract the substring b so the substring b or the second substring would be nothing but num dot sub str of what from the i plus one th index i'll trim a string of j minus i length and once i have taken this string then i will check that whether it is valid or not so i will check if the is valid function for this particular second uh, number that i have taken okay if it is uh, equal to what if it is equal to false so if it uh, is not valid if it is more than 18 digits then after that what i need to do is i need to return like i need to break the loop here indicating that uh, this is not possible Okay, otherwise what I will do is if it is possible, then in my sequence, I will add this particular number uh, by converting this string into long long. So I will use STOLL and B. I'll pass here. So it will convert the second number that I've extracted in form of a string into long long type. Okay, now once that is done, so my K loop will be like K index will start from J plus one. And then after that, I will say that while the K is lesser than the length of the number till that point of time I need to iterate and then I will say that uh, let's say I will find the size so size will be nothing but sequence dot size okay so I'll find the size of my sequence and then what I will do here is I will say that string the sum would be what the sum of the previous two number because I want to check that whether the current number that I'm generating if it is equal to the sum of the previous two numbers or not so I will find the sum of the previous two numbers that will be nothing but sequence of uh, size minus one plus the sequence of size minus two. So it will allow me to get the previous two numbers. Once I have got this, then I will check. What I'm going to check is I will check uh, the position. So I'll store the position by using the find function. So I'll use this find function, which is there in a string. And then I will pass uh, like, uh, since I have generated this. So now I will try to do what? I will try to check whether the, this sum is present. Okay, whether this particular indirectly, it will allow me to find this particular sum whether it is present or not so whenever i found this sum so i'll convert it into a string you can say so two string so that i can search it inside the string okay so what i will do here is uh, i have started my uh, k from j plus one and then I'm, i've taken the last two numbers the latest two numbers that i have generated i've taken this sum and converted into a string and then i'm checking that starting from the index k if that particular sum a string is present or not if that is present so this means that the sum of the previous two numbers is equal to the third number if it is present okay so if what happens is uh, if uh, if the pause is equal equal to k so suppose if the pause is equal equal to k this means that uh, the, the, this means that yes it is present and it's starting indexes k only then in that case what i can say here is that i will push it back 
so I'll push it back because my sequence has been completed. So I'll push it back in my uh, sequence. So I'll push back this particular sum uh, by converting it into the string in my sequence. And then after that, uh, I'll increase my k with uh, by this many indexes because now I my k needs to move forward. Okay, so k will move by this many indexes. So I have saved a loop by using the find function for the string okay else if it is not possible so i will break away indicating that the, the those two numbers cannot generate a third number okay so that is why i have broken here now what my uh, job is that after this while loop is over then what i need to check so after this while loop is over then i will check what i will check here is that if the k value is equal to n so if the k reaches the end and the sequence uh, size is greater or equal to 3 so if we have reached the end okay and there are 3 or more than the, that many digits which are following this particular uh, criteria that is the sum of the two numbers is equal to the third number in the string uh, okay if there are three numbers or more more than that following this criteria then in that case what you need to do is you need to simply return true indicating that yes it is possible uh, otherwise uh, like uh, after this is over then you will say that uh, it was not possible with these numbers right so with this j uh, with this uh, substrings i and j that you have taken out right it was not possible so you will say that you need to pop these uh, numbers out that you have generated because they were of no use it's kind of a backtracking step only so then you will do what you will do queued uh, sq uh, sequence dot pop back so we will write sequence dot pop back so this will allow us to remove all the elements from the sequence and then after this particular while loop uh, will uh, get over okay so then uh, we are iterating till the size is greater than zero and then after this j loop is over then again i will do sq dot uh, pop back okay because if the substring from zero to i is stored that is something that i need to uh, pop out and then at the end if it was not possible so i would have never returned a true and i'll uh, return false simply okay so let's try and compile this code to check if it is working fine or not. I have written the logic correctly. It's just that whether the implementation is correct or not. Okay, so it says that sq.pop. So I should write seq.pop here. Okay, so why I'm doing this? Because uh, suppose that if we did not run the J loop, then if, if for some reason we broke out of the J loop, then whatever is there inside the sequence because of the uh, substring from 0 to i, that also we need to pop out. So we need to pop it out one time. Okay. It is running fine on the samples. Let's try and submit this code to check if it is getting accepted or not. It should get accepted, I think. Yes, you can see that our code was able to pass all the test cases. So I hope that you have understood this problem clearly. And obviously you can see that the time complexity would be how much. So first loop i is there, then another loop inside it is j, and then I'm using a find function. And find function in the worst case would take order of n time. So we are having cubic complexity. That is the complexity of my code is order of n cube time complexity. I hope that you have understood this uh, question properly and the approach for it. If you have understood it clearly, please mention plus one or clear in the chat and make sure to hit the like button. Thank you for watching this video guys and keep coding.